Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I am back to do the mid-year book freak out tag because it is the 20th of June when I'm filming, it's probably sometime in July unless I'm really speedy at editing, which means we are midway through the year and everyone is freaking out. Everyone is looking back at their reading and just thinking, oh my God, what have I not managed to do? But it's okay, it's okay. If we take stock of everything, then we can work out how to move forward. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually not feeling too freaked out about my reading at this point in the year, which is quite nice. The main goal that I cared about was my TBR, and to be honest, that's also the one that I am not doing the best at. My TBR is still sitting around the 60s mark, which is what it was at the beginning of the year, so not doing too great on that. But at the current moment of filming, I have read 73 books this year, which is better than I have done on any previous year, I think. I think there were some years since I've been using Goodreads where I was reading like 40 books in a year, so this is pretty good for me. But without much further ado, let's just get into these questions. Question number one is best book that you've read so far this year and I think a theme of this mid-year book freak out tag is that I can't stick to one answer and that's certainly true for this first question because I'm kind of hopping between three different books which are all very very different and I don't know how I could choose between them and those books are Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, The Language of Food by Annabelle Abbs and You and Me on Vacation by Emily Henry. So a bit of a mix, we've got romance, we've got a couple of historical fiction but these historical fiction are quite different in their tone. Kindred is a little bit more sci-fi, you know, there's a time travel element. They're all very different and all very good and all things that I really, really enjoyed. So what am I meant to do? But I highly recommend that you check all of these out. Question number two is best sequel you've read so far this year. So I had a look at my Goodreads and had a little think about which books I have read that were sequels. And the sequels that I have read were The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. That is the second book in the Bridgerton series. Uh, the Miserable Mill, which is, I believe, the fourth book in the series of the Mortal events. I read the first six books in Anne of Green Gables, so books two to six would count for this. I read Take a Hint, Danny Brown and Act Your Age, Eve Brown, which are the second and third books in the Brown Sisters trilogy. Out of those, I would say that Take a Hint, Danny Brown and all of the Anne books, all of the Anne of Green Gables books were my favourites. But I do also want to give a bit of a shout out to that second Bridgerton book because I much, much preferred this to the first one. I think largely because I preferred this couple and also because there isn't a gratuitous sexual assault scene, you know? much improved. Question number three is a new release that you haven't read yet from this year but you want to. So a book that has already come out in this first half of the year that I haven't yet gotten to. One that I'm very interested in is Elizabeth of York, The Last White Rose, which is by Alison Weir. But because I am currently ongoing through her Six Tudor Queen series, I feel like I need to read those before I read Elizabeth of York, even though Elizabeth of York obviously came before the Tudor Queens. There's a non-fiction book called Portable Magic, which I cannot remember the name of the author, but that looks really good. You know, it's a history of reading off books. And of course there is The House of the Golden Door by Elodie Harper. This is a book that I am about a third of the way through and haven't yet finished. This is the follow-up to The Wolf Den, which I really love from last year. So this at the moment is the high priority in terms of a new release that I haven't read yet. Question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of 2022. Now I hopefully should have already done a most anticipated releases video that is covering books from July to September but if you haven't seen that probably my most anticipated release for the second half of the year is Stoneblind by Natalie Haynes. That is her Medusa retelling. I'm a massive fan of Natalie Haynes and her writing. That Medusa like how can you not be intrigued by that? Question number five is biggest disappointment this year and I feel like I had quite a few books that I found a bit meh. I wasn't a big fan of Scenes of a Graphic Nature or The Intoxicating Mr. Lavelle. In fact, that was the first book that I gave one star to. I read a couple of the British Library Women Writers series and I was really let down by both of them. They were both two star books. I read some Barbara Pym this year, which I didn't really get on with. In fact, I ended up DNFing the books that I read from her. But I think the one that really was the biggest disappointment to me was actually one of the first books that I read this year and that was Leah Wife by J.R. Thorpe. This wasn't a terrible book. In fact, I think I gave it three stars at the time, but but this felt like a book that really should have been tailor-made to me because it is about King Lear, which is my favourite Shakespearean tragedy. It's looking at a female perspective that we don't get to see, which is King Lear's wife and mother to Goneril, Regan and Cordelia. And I thought this was going to be so interesting. And there were some really cool concepts, some cool ideas, but I ultimately felt the execution was lacking. I didn't really love how he spent all of the narrative in this nunnery. And I especially hated a choice that was made for right at the end of the book using an existing character from the play. I did not like the character 
choice that was made here and it just made me really really cross. It was not the worst book that I read of the year by far, you know there were worse books that I read but this should have been made for me and it wasn't. Question number six is the biggest surprise from this year and I think absolutely the biggest surprise for me was how much I loved Anne of Green Gables. This was a book that honestly like I, I had no plans of reading this. One of my closest friends Rachel has been shouting the praises of Anne of Green Gables for so so long and I was like yeah yeah sure yeah I'll read it eventually and I had no plans of reading it. It didn't sound interesting to me. You know, it's a book that has a rural setting and that is one of my instant turnoffs. I do not care about farms. I'm sorry, that is an issue with me. I grew up around farms. I, I don't care. I don't care. Give me a city or a university setting any day. But I found this beautiful copy from the V&A collection at one of my local charity shops and I couldn't say no to it. And I thought, you know what? this is the time. And I started reading it thinking I wasn't going to enjoy it and I was instantly hooked and instantly charmed by this main character of Anne Shirley. And now I've read the first six of the books, the main narrative of Anne of Green Gables and <sighs> I can't believe how much this character has taken over my life. I love her so much. There have been books where I've been surprised to have liked them. Things like Still Life by Sarah Winman. I hadn't been a massive fan of Tin Man so I thought you know I'm, I'm probably not going to be into this and then I surprisingly was but there hasn't been like a surprise book that has hit me quite as hard as Anne. Question number seven is favourite new author and I think there are only two authors whom I've read multiple books from and they were new to me. Those two authors being Ellen Montgomery who wrote the Anne of Green Gable series as well as Emily Henry who wrote Beach Read, You and Me on Vacation and Book Lovers all of which I read this year and I'd probably say that Emily Henry is my favourite purely because of the fact that I've only read the one series from Ellen Montgomery doesn't feel quite as fair whereas I've read three different narratives from Emily Henry and really enjoyed all of them some more than others I would definitely say that my order is Last Place Beach Read then Book Lovers and then You and Me on Vacation which is my favourite by far but because I enjoyed all of these books because I love the themes that she plays with I love how she writes characters I'm definitely going to be checking out any other books from her in the future. Question number eight is newest fictional crush and because I've been reading so much more romance this year I actually have a plethora of answers that I could have for this. This is why everyone should read romance because you have like these little blushing giggly moments whilst reading. I, I highly recommend it. Most recently there has been Captain Logan Mackenzie from When a Scott Ties the Knot. This is my very first like Regency romance I think. Maybe not but it's definitely my first one that has one of these mass market paperbacks with the cover with the half naked man. To be honest with you I'm not really picturing these two as they are on the cover. I think I think my imagination for Captain Logan Mackenzie is a lot more hot. Also surprisingly Anthony Bridgerton in the second Bridgerton book because of the fact that with this book as opposed to the TV show you actually get a lot more time seeing Kate and Anthony married and seeing what their dynamic is like as a couple and that Anthony, that Anthony as he appears like absolutely besotted with his wife, I had a bit of a crush on him. But you know Jonathan Bailey is also very beautiful too. And I couldn't talk about fictional crushes without talking about Zaf from Take a Hint Danny Brown. I mean this is a man who reads romance books in his free time. Like what's not to love? I mean that's the first thing that we learn about this character and I was instantly like yes this is the best of the Brown sisters boys. <laughs> Team Zaf all the way. <laughs> Question number nine is your newest favourite character and as I said I was really really taken by Anne Shirley of Anne of Green Gables. I just think she is a beautiful character. You know she she can be irritating and I think that if you are somebody who is is very irritable by people who are daydreamers who have an overactive imagination who have a little bit I don't, I don't know if you would say she has like ADHD her attention is not on her task that is set for too long but she's a fierce friend she's very intelligent when she does have the motivation to try hard in school she actually becomes top of the class because she does see things in a different way to people and has so much creativity and I just think she's great she's a ray of sunshine I also want to give a shout out to Matthew, Matthew Cuthbert, what a gem. And I'm going to think of him as he appears in the show and not what happens in the book. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry this year. And once again, we are jumping back to Anne of Green Gables because Anne's House of Dreams. <sighs> there is a plot point in Anne's House of Dreams that absolutely broke me and I didn't see coming. And... <laughs> It's one of those moments where you know that Anne as a character is never going to be the same again and it's devastating. And I didn't see it coming. I was, I was, I was, <laughs> I was listening to the audiobook. I remember vividly. I actually ran to, I remember I ran to the corner shop to get some parmesan and then the thing that happened, happened. And I was crossing the road, like almost crying with my parmesan in my hands. That's a reading moment that's just going to stick in my memory forever. Alternatively, question number 11 is book that made you happy this year. And really for me, it was all of the romances that I read this year. I've always known that I love a romance 
plot in a book. You know, I love a romantic comedy film. A lot of my favourite books, a lot of my favourite classics are books that have romance in them. So things like Pride and Prejudice, you know, Pride and Prejudice is like the gold standard. <laughs> if you read a romance, especially a Regency romance, it is most likely based on a Jane Austen or has some elements of Jane Austen in there. And yeah, I didn't tend to read a whole lot of straight romance, you know, where romance is the genre and not just an added plot. You know, I'd maybe read a book like that maybe once a year and it would be like a nice little treat to myself, but not something that I went to all the time. And this year I've really upped my romance book game and it has made me so happy. You'll have seen from my holiday video that I read pretty much exclusively romance books and it's just been joyous and wonderful. And why do we not do this all the time? You know, I love a romance plot in books. I love a happy ending and that's what you're always guaranteed to get with a romance book. So that's a win for me. Question number 12 is the most beautiful book that you've bought or received so far this year. And this is the one question I actually haven't prepped for because I'm going to look at my books. It's actually quite a hard one to answer, but I think maybe something like Glass Town. This is illustrated by Isabel Greenberg, who you probably know for the Encyclopedia of Early Earth, as well as A Thousand Nights of Hero. But this is a graphic novel detailing like the early life of the Brontes. And as you see, it's just, it's just stunning illustrations. I've also recently bought Gaia Goddess of Earth by Imogen and Isabel Greenberg. And once again, just gorgeous. And there's also the foiling, which I love. And then finally, question number 13 is what do you need to read by the end of the year? And I think I can hear Kieran's like siren call. I know what he's gonna say. Oh, hi, Charlotte. It's the centenary of Ulysses by James Joyce. And I sent you a copy and you've been, you've been off putting reading this for, for nearly three years coming up. And I don't think you're putting your heart and soul into this. When are we buddy reading this fine edition of Ulysses together? Yeah, Kieran declared war well earlier this week and he told all of his followers on Instagram that I was backing out of the Ulysses read-along, which I take issue with, sir, because this hasn't even been mentioned to me. <laughs> like, it's something that we've been talking about for a couple of years now and I've said to Kieran, I have said to him that this is the centennial, it's a hundred years since Ulysses was first published so we have to read it this year and then I've heard radio silence from him so I don't know what he's talking about saying that I'm the one who backed out. If anything, you backed down, Kieran, you did. But also, like, neither of us are really <laughs> looking forward to it but I have a copy. I don't want to read it. I don't. I don't. And neither does he. But we are both tied to this. It's going to happen. I don't know when. Sometime before the end of the year we do need to read Ulysses by James Joyce and I don't want to do it. Nah. So there we go. Those are all of the questions for the mid-year book freakout tag. I would love to hear any answers to these questions that you have. Especially keen to know about your favourite book that you've read so far this year. I'd love to get some more recommendations. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.